So a few months ago, I made a video talking about whether Xenoblade 3 would connect to Xenoblade X. Since making that video, we've had a lot more information drop and even more references to X. So here's a follow-up video with even more evidence that Ionios is Mira. Quick spoiler warning for Xenoblade X though, as we'll be talking about quite a few X topics today. Starting with the recent release date trailer, we got the reveal of the new Ouroboros transformations. There are a number of similarities between the designs of these forms and the designs of skills and gear in Xenoblade X. For instance, each one of the Ouroboros forms seems to resemble the framework for the Ares skull. This is most obviously seen through Noah and Mio's transformation, as they look nearly identical to it, besides all of the extra parts added on. Even the lights located on the Ares frame are in the exact same position as the cores on the Ouroboros forms. Whilst the other two forms don't resemble it as much, they do utilise other design elements from X as well. Tyon and Uni's design practically copies the female scale wear from the Grenada manufacturer, whilst Lanz and Senna's design mirrors that of some other scale concept artwork. They bear the most resemblance, however, to the ghosts from Xenoblade X. These are one of the alien races that participated in the battle which ended up destroying Earth, and are also the ones who attacked two years later after the White Whale had fled. Design wise, they look close to identical to the other Ouroboros, as well as Mr. Wild Ride. <laughs> but there are even more similarities. The ghost can be seen firing energy blasts from their hands in a similar way to how he fires a projectile in this scene. I therefore think it's plausible that the Ouroboros forms could have something to do with the ghosts, and Xenoblade 3 may show us why the Samarians and ghosts were fighting in the first place. Continuing with the scale theme, we also saw two new mechs in the trailer, which were being piloted by Kamuravi and Ethel. Granted, both designs of these mechs do not seem to resemble any of the skills in Xenoblade X, but at the same time, they don't need to. The humans, Ganglion and Rothians all utilised different styles of skills, which presumably also piloted differently. However, there appeared to be certain aspects that they shared, and these are similarities that the new mechs also possess. For instance, a minor detail that you might not have picked up on is that you can clearly see outside from the cockpit, even though it appears to be completely concealed on the outside. We see the exact same thing in Xenoblade X when you enter cockpit view as well as during Luxar's boss fight in the Vita. Additionally, the Agnes mechs use tech which has each limb not physically connected and instead are suspended in the air via ether. Both the Ganglion Qos and Ziggs appear to use the same tech once again. The body of the machine is separate to the other limbs and you can see what looks like ether around them. Skills are also specifically referred to as scale technology, which suggests that all scales originated from the same place, and therefore, it isn't hard to imagine that these mechs in Xenoblade 3 could be where the scale technology originated from. Moving on, the names of both worlds are also rather interesting. Credit goes to the Twit Gamer though for pointing this out to me. The word Mira has a multitude of meanings, including admirable, prosperous and wonderful, but the one that we're going to focus on today is peace. On the other hand, Ionios means eternal or everlasting in Greek, and thus this results in the phrase everlasting peace. Whilst this obviously means eternal happiness, it also has the more sinister meaning of inescapable utopia. This is due to the everlasting literally meaning eternal in that it can never end and thus you are trapped in this paradise forever. In this way, Mira is also inescapable as is shown from Professor B and Lau. Professor B attempts to travel into the future to get back to his original timeline, but he finds himself trapped when he's blocked by something that sends him back. Lau is an even more extreme case, as even death is not enough to escape the prison that is Mira. This concept parallels the tale of the labyrinth made by Daedalus to imprison the Minotaur, at the orders of King Minos of Crete. The labyrinth was designed to easily let people enter, but not to exit. Similarly, Professor B and the inhabitants of the White Whale were able to easily arrive on present day Mira, but were unable to leave in any capacity. The name Minos that I mentioned earlier is also the name of one of the beanstalks from Xenoblade 2, and a tower-like structure is also visible in the Mira concept art. If this tower is the same one that is known to exist in all rest, then I believe it is feasible for this planet to be an inescapable prison, where all life walks hand in hand towards the future. 
Now we went a little off topic there, so let's look at something a little bit more down to earth. Majority of the clothing in Xenoblade 3 visually looks very similar to the clothes that are seen in Xenoblade X. For example, most people of Kivas wear clothes which have this blue ring on them, which was first shown off with Shulk's future connected outfit. In Xenoblade X, however, the cosmetics of Meredith and Co also feature these same rings, as can be seen on a multitude of outfits. Interestingly, this arms manufacturer specialises in recycling ganglion tech into weapons and gear. As we know, the ganglion were slaves to the Samar Federation, and assuming that Mira is the home planet of the Samarians, who are thought to be the ancestors of humans, it isn't unthinkable that this style could have originated from the people of Kivas. Agnes also has its fair share of design similarities to X, in the form of the Rothians. Agnes soldiers wear armour which appears to be comprised of cloth, which is the same material that many of the Rothians wear. Even their weapons look similar, with the same type of light blades being used for their melee weapons. Maybe the Rothians are descendants of the Gormotti? Probably not, but it's interesting to see how many design elements were taken from Xenoblade X and are being applied into Xenoblade 3. Finally, I want to talk about some other minor connections that have been spotted in recent screenshots. We recently got to see a few images of the new desert area called Aegis Wilderness, and within them we can see this same type of flora in each. These trees are very reminiscent of some of the plant life that we can see in Oblivia and Noctilum. Once again, these areas don't look exactly alike, but considering the potential time differences between these two games, I think it's reasonable to think that these could be the same type of plant life after a few thousand years of evolution. The Agnes mechs were also shown off a little more through the Ethel trailer. From this, I realise that they have a lot of similarities to the Zedoms and Oxserve enemies from Xenoblade X. Visually, they are very much alike and both are unmanned, which suggests that they could be Agnes artificers. According to their enemy descriptions, both the Zedoms and Oxserves are native to Mira and are simply being controlled by the Ganglion. If these are Agnes mechs and the Samarians are the descendants of the people of Ionios, then this would make sense, as the technology is likely very similar to what the Ganglion use, albeit ancient in comparison. Lastly, we recently got a look at the area known as the Great Cot Falls, and here we can see something that I am not looking forward to. These may innocently look just like plants to some of you, but for those of you who have played X, these plants do have a terrifying resemblance to the Mortifold enemies. These plant-based enemies hide themselves in the ground and attack when you get close, whilst also being impossible to distinguish from regular flora. For this reason, they are extremely annoying as they constantly get in your way, and this is the one connection to X that I was hoping not to see. But with all that said and done, that was pretty much all the evidence I could find which makes me believe that Ionios and Mira are the same place. If there's anything I missed or you might think also connects this game to X, then let me know in the comments, and whilst you're there, click that subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I upload. I appreciate you all for watching this far into the video though, and I hope to catch you in the the next one. So till then, peace.